It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair. Ooh, that was a bit intense there. Uh, <laughs> apologies. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Batman, The Long Halloween Part 2. The reason why I actually opened with that is I actually watched the final confrontation of the Dark Knight between Gordon, Batman, and Two-Face Harvey Dent. That film does take a lot from The Long Halloween, and it kind of further verifies the comment I made in the previous review for Part 1 that The Long Halloween is essentially the quintessential Batman story. It is one of the best that's ever been written, and admittedly, Part 2 does do a lot more service to the comic and just being an overall narrative than the first part did. Not to say that it doesn't have a lot of issues, it does kind of come out of the gate a bit tumbling, like it almost trips over itself with how much randomness happens at the beginning, the first 10 minutes. If you didn't watch part one, you would be completely lost. I had watched part one and I was a little bit lost. There's all of these weird little skips of time with Poison Ivy controlling Batman, Bruce Wayne having his name be foregoed over into the Falcone estate. There are all these little bits that happen in the first 15 minutes. It's going to throw you for a loop. But then after that, the film starts to get more of its grounding again. It starts to have this forward narrative. It really does try to throw the rogues gallery into this film, even though they are so haphazardly thrown in. Scarecrow, Mad Hatter, Penguin, Joker. Even though Joker's voiced by Troy Baker, who I think Jeremy John said it best that if you can't get Mark Hamill, get Troy Baker because he's the best backup for Mark Hamill in terms of a Mark Hamill Joker performance. But really the whole conflict is between the Falcone family pretty much within their own ranks as well as Harvey Dent slowly succumbing over to the Two-Face uh, persona. And I do feel that that happens a little bit sudden, but again, I am also comparing it to the animated Batman series episode, which I still think is the best Harvey Dent turning into Two-Face story ever done. It beats the Dark Knight, it beats the Long Halloween, it beats everyone. This is the quintessential Two-Face origin story if I were to ever choose it. It's a fantastic episode. If you've never seen it, definitely watch it. But part two still does a good job of transitioning over and showing the madness, but also the unflinching loyalty to chance that Harvey Dent has. Because at this point, he has tried everything in the legal realm to try and keep his life together, to try and bring the Falcone family down, but it's failed. It's failed and it's failed and it's failed to the point where his face got eaten by acid. But when he transitions over, you see his point of view and you get the mentality of where he's coming from. I do like this part better. I like the back stories to the characters. I do like the action better. There are maybe a few things that are a slightly different from the comic, but actually it stays pretty loyal. Like some of the dialogue even is verbatim. The only thing that I would say that they very much so change, and by very much so, I mean the most radical change I can see is when the identity of Holiday is revealed. In the comic, it's kind of more so madness and conjoining of two people, whereas in the movie, it has a little bit more of a less madness, more revenge kind of aspect to it. I would almost say it makes a little bit more sense in the film than it did in the comic, because in the comic it kind of blows you out of the bloody water. And in the film I guess it would too, but the explanation behind it is still there. It's not really grounded as much. You're definitely thinking it's someone else. I do like it. I think that the ending is solid. It's a little different from the comic, but it's still pretty good. Jensen Ackles once again does a pretty decent job as Batman, but he is so a side character in this one. He's even more of a side character in this part than I say he was in the first one. When I say he did an okay job, that's pretty much it. He got two movies worth of him, so I'd say Jensen's got a pretty good rap sheet now. Is it one of the best Batman performances? Nah. The one who I would still say blows me away that actually did a really, really good performance was Josh Dunham as Harvey Dent Two-Face. I really liked his character. I liked how he portrayed the character's voice. I was very much surprised by this guy. I was not expecting this kind of performance in terms of a voice acting uh, sort of uh, field, but he definitely did probably the best job out of everyone in this entire film. So in the end, I'm gonna give part two of The Long Halloween a five out of seven. I would definitely recommend it. 
but don't buy it just wait until they do the part one part two combination which apparently they're gonna do sometime next year which i don't know why they would need to wait so long if i were to really guess i think they would maybe consider doing a release of it in november so there's the christmas sales but that might be a stretch hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe otherwise See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.